Welcome to Crime Nation. This is the companion podcast for Crime Nation, the series, which airs Tuesday on The CW at 8 p.m. in the East. This is the place where we take you behind the headlines of some of America's most shocking crimes and give you the scoop on each episode. You'll hear exclusive clips, hear the stories that didn't make the show, and you'll meet the people that bring Crime Nation to life. You are here in Crime Nation. Hey everybody, this is Brian Enton. Uh, you may see me out there covering all the crime stories for News Nation, but this new project we're working on is so exciting. Uh, we're so excited about Crime Nation. Uh, we've been working on it for months, sort of had to keep it a secret. I've been going off to all these mysterious uh, shoots. There's been a lot happening behind the scenes, but we're so excited for people to finally see it. There are so many cases, the cases that we've all followed in the true crime community for years that we're taking a really deep dive into with Crime Nation. And when I say deep, I mean really, really deep. That's what's so special about this new docu-series on the CW. We've got the Delphi murders, the Idaho College murders, of course, uh, Murdoch, uh, the Gilgo Beach serial killer, Gabby Petito, <clears throat> which all sorts of new unexpected developments lately with that case. Uh, some of the older cases, too, that still have a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, Drew Peterson, for example. Uh, and the list really goes on and on. And what's so cool about Crime Nation and, and why I'm so excited about it and why I think it's so different from the other crime shows that you've seen out there is that these are two hour episodes. I mean, that's unheard of. Think about the crime shows on the other networks. They're usually an hour. You get sort of the surface level, the information that you've already heard about. But the thing about two hours is you can really take a deep dive in. Um, you think you know the cases. Even I think I know the cases. But when you have two hours to really dive in, you can uncover details and things that you never knew before. And for every single case, I'll promise you this. There is something new that we have uncovered her crime nation or learn during our investigation that you are going to learn in these two hour episodes. And not just one thing, you're gonna learn new things in each episode. Even if you think you know these cases again, we uncovered new stuff and we've got time to actually explain it, which is so exciting. New interviews, new people coming forward, exclusive new nuggets of information. I mean, if you follow me, you know I love the word nugget. We've got new nuggets for you and it's, it's really gonna be awesome. Uh, and we've got so many incredible contributors too. Of course, we interview the newsmakers for all the different stories, the police, the family members, witnesses in some of these cases who have never spoken before. We've got them in Crime Nation, but we've also got some really incredible contributors. Ashley Banfield, of course, you know her from News Nation. She's sort of like the queen of crime. Uh, you're going to hear from her. She's got all sorts of new nuggets on cases. Doug Coons, retired FBI agent. Dr. Joni Johnson, a forensic psychologist. Uh, Lauren Mathias, my friend, her husband, John Mathias, also a forensic psychologist. They help us understand these cases in a way uh, that we really haven't thought about before. And, and you're going to see that. First episode has already aired. Uh, if you're listening and you missed it, don't worry. They stream the next day on the CW app so you can catch it there. Uh, our first episode focused on the Delphi murders, which we're actually at, I believe it's the seven year mark uh, since that awful case. The young teens. Abby Williams and Libby Germain, where they were best friends in their close-knit community of Delphi, Indiana. Uh, but on the tragic day, you remember February 13th, 2017, the girls were violently murdered while walking into the woods. This has been one of those cases that has just haunted so many of us for so long. Uh, during the investigation, there were three major suspects that came up over the years, which is one of the reasons it's so controversial, even to this day. The first was Ron Logan. He owned the property where the girls were murdered. The second, Keegan Klein, who uh, catfished one of the girls the night before the murder. And the third suspect, Richard Allen, a local married guy uh, who worked in the Delphi CVS. And, and six years later, Ron Logan, the one suspect is dead. Keegan Klein, he was convicted of child pornography, sentenced to 40 years in prison. And that leaves us with Richard Allen, who was arrested for the murders in November of 2022 and is standing trial next year. Uh, and he is the one that police say actually committed the murders. But one of the things about this case, and if you followed it, you know, there are all sorts of questions about what really happened. Uh, and again, one of the things that makes Crime Nation so special is we have the time to look into it. And just like with the other cases with Delphi, 
we are able to break ground. We broke ground with exclusive interviews uh, and, a, and a, a ton of new little nuggets of information that really added up into something that has never uh, come out before. We had an exclusive interview with, uh, with Connie Dillman, former girlfriend of suspect Ron Logan. I want you to take a listen to the clip from the show where she spoke and you're gonna hear from that girlfriend. Again, this is the first time uh, she's spoken publicly before. When I seen the picture of the, the bridge guy, I knew for certain that it was Ron Logan. That's, that was his figure that I seen. My name is Connie Dillman. I knew Ron Logan. I had a relationship with him for approximately six years. This is my backyard. My backyard just happens to be bigger than most people. How many people have a murder committed at their home in their backyard? Yeah, there's a crime scene down there. See how the ground's much more matted down right in yeah. here? I think you're right there. I was at my house. It was on the news when I heard it. The very day that I heard that Abby and Libby were murdered on his property, and I said, oh my God, he finally killed somebody. And I knew that he killed Abby and Libby. I knew he, he's capable of doing something like that. Really powerful to hear her say that. Again, it, it's a new exclusive interview. Definitely worth watching the full two hour show. Totally worth watching the full two hours because that was just a little clip of, of what you'll hear from her. And again, you can stream the whole thing on the CW app if you missed, um, missed the episode. Also in, in the Delphi episode, we had new revelations from social media on conspiracy theories and whether the right man has actually been arrested. And that is something that comes up uh, to this day. I mean, you've got a lot of people who are not convinced that they've got the right person behind bars. Uh, and with a trial set for 2024, there's a gag order in place. The Delphi community, they remain divided. There's all sorts of conspiracy theories, online feuds, suspicions. We dive into it all. Uh, the pursuit of justice, it, it's fractured the town, which we discovered when we, went out, when we went out there to Delphi. Yeah, it's been seven years, but for the people there, it feels like it just happened a couple days ago. And, and these forms and the online presence is still in, insane with, with the whole thing. You've got not only the town, but everyone who's followed the case all over the world, really anxiously waiting for closure. We also spoke to friends and, and family of the victims. They're still very, very emotional. They're raw, even, even years later. I, I want you to listen to this clip from the show. This is the picture that was used in one of the first news releases. It's Libby. She looks full of life. Well, this is, this is kind of hard. It's hard? Why is this hard? I don't know, it's just it's different holding it in my hand and looking at it as an actual picture than through a phone or a screen. That's why I was okay. Like, I'm, I'm 20 now. I thought I was okay with all this. <laughs> and what's so crazy with Delphi, again, is that it's still so active and ongoing. Uh, there's all this legal drama even up to a couple of days ago, accusations about leaked evidence. The lawyers representing Richard Allen, they were removed from the case because of these leaked crime scene photos. Then they were reinstated. They were trying to get the judge off the case too. It's really been a legal mess. And again, that's what I think is one of the things that makes Crime Nation so special is we've got the full two hours to explain some of these things, where when you watch other shows, you know, it's one line where, where we'll have more time to explain some of the, the stuff that's been happening um, happening recently. All right, I want to bring in uh, Mike Sheridan now. He's one of the executive producers of Crime Nation. I've been working with Mike a lot behind the scenes. Uh, I'm very fortunate to work with Mike. He's, he's done a lot of incredible things in his career. Mike, first of all, just tell us a little bit um, about your history, and I, I know you're super excited for the show. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, Brian. And, and really truly amazing working with you so i got it i'll put that out front um you know right away so um you know i think i've been lucky over my career to work with uh very talented uh people and producers executive producers network execs and so on and you're you are definitely up there top on the list um 
So I've, oh, I've man. been, uh, thank you. <laughs> what are you going to ask me to do now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think probably, uh, one of the, the bigger shows that, um, I've done that has directed my career where I am now is, uh, the first 48 is running the first 48 for, uh, for several years, um, as showrunner. And that was an amazing experience and really met like so many, uh, terrific people that I still have. And, and actually that we're working with right now on, uh, crime nation that we've been lucky to, to bring aboard. Um, so that was that was definitely one of the biggest. And then working with uh, Joe Berlinger on on a various uh, documentaries, uh, criminal justice uh, documentaries that we we did uh, for Radical Media, uh, and and then I actually was lucky enough to have my own company with a, a partner, uh, Joe Venifro, and we uh, we did a, a couple of series for Investigation Discovery. So just a, a whole bunch of um, a lot of a lot of true crime uh, over over the years that led me here. I've been so impressed with the team that you put together and and people have seen the first episode, hopefully uh, by now Delphi, and if not, you can stream it on the CW app. Uh, but what I think is so cool, Mike, is that these are two hour episodes because uh, I cover crime, you know, almost every day and, you know, we have to get to it quickly. It's usually things that are unfolding in the moment and, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our segments in five, 10 minutes. But what's been so cool for me with this project is to see it come together in two hours. I mean, you you can learn so much in two hours that you that you don't get. I mean, there's I can't think of any other crime shows that are that long. I mean, it, I think that's what makes it so special. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. And when um, uh, the president of um, Candle True Stories, James Goldston, and uh, VP. Stephen Baker approached me about this. I mean, that was one of the big things that stuck out. It's like, wow, we're getting this opportunity to really do a deep dive into these stories and to go behind the scenes and tell them, uh, you know, in, in more depth than kind of anyone else has had the opportunity to do before. And on top of that, I think they they raised the level um, to bring more of a, a premium, you know, documentary storytelling to these stories in where we have no narration. So I think there's, you know, that's an, an additional challenge for producers and storytelling, but it allows you to give the people who experienced it and the experts the opportunity to really tell their story and to tell the, you know, the, the real story rather than just sound bites uh, here and there. And so I, I agree with you completely to have that oppor opportunity to do that. And for the CW to give, to give us that opportunity is tremendous. And a lot of people recognize these stories. They've heard of them before Delphi, Gabby Petito, um, Gilgo, Koberger, um, think stories that you think you know a lot about, but I think people will notice uh, with Crime Nation, there's so much that they don't know. Um, and the digging that that we've done behind the scenes, that the producers have done behind the scenes to come up with new nuggets, new information, new interviews is really amazing because you feel like these going in, going into it, these stories have been told so many times. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, no one really dug this deep before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in each of the stories, um, I've been absolutely uh, amazed and just impressed with how our producers and our team have been able to do that. And I, I think, you know, a, a big reason is because of the type of people that they are. And they are, I think we're very lucky in working with a, a very sharp journalistic uh, talents, um, but producers who are human and and you know treat everyone involved in these stories with respect um, and and an understanding that you know sometimes we're asking people to relive the worst days of their lives, right? And 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 this is something that we certainly take very, re, you know, very seriously when approaching, uh, you know, people ab about these stories. Um, but to be able to 
kind of, uh, you know, pull the curtain back and to find those threads, uh, you know, that are still there, new mysteries that need to be solved, new insights into what motivate, motivated these terrible crimes in the first place has really been great. And I think uh, Delphi, uh, this, you know, first show, um, you know, A Town Torn Apart is a perfect example of that. Learning about um, through uh, the social media voices and all these other voices, how the authorities um, in pointing the finger saying, um, you know, this person could be your neighbor, this person can be, you know, someone walking down the street, really kind of helped to tear that town apart. And, um, you know, as we started to dive in more and talking to them, um, I, I think, you know, we found people like Connie Dillman, who is uh, the ex-girlfriend of one of the primary suspects. And she came forward and was extremely em emotional um, during her interview. Yeah, and that's the first time we've really heard from Connie in this way ever, which is just another example. I mean, Delphi, we're now on the seven year mark just about since it happened. And so many people have covered it, but I think Crime Nation has just come at it in these other cases in a different way where they're able to, where you guys are able to, where we're able to uh, uncover interviews and facts that just haven't come to the surface uh, before. Casey White, the same situation. That's the next one airing. Um, you know, I felt like I knew that case inside and out going into this. I was on the ground covering it, but there's just something about coming back a year, two years later, the dust has settled and people are willing to talk that weren't willing to talk initially. And with Casey White, what I think people are going to think is so interesting is we really dive into this other case that he was a part of and how that may have um, influenced Vicky White in terms of helping Casey White uh, escape, which I've just, I've, we never, we never looked at it that way before. And I think, I think it's just, I think people are going to think that's interesting to, it's a different way of looking at a lot of these cases. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the, the timing also, just like you mentioned, sometimes, you know, people get uh, fatigued of, of doing it or they don't want to share their story just yet because so many times, uh, I mean, just because of the nature of these cases, right? These are some of the, the most compelling, biggest sensational cases and the, the ones that, that we are covering uh, during this season that, you know, the media will come down, you know, as you know, and so it's, it can be overwhelming uh, for people. And so to step back, give them a little bit of time, um, you do find every now and then they've processed it. And now it's in, sometimes it's a way for them to also relieve the stress and pressure that's on them as well, right? To be able to talk and to tell their part of the story. So you're right, this uh, Connie Ridgway um, and her family, it's amazing to, you know, that, you know, when we talk to them to find out there's this whole other part of the story and that Vicky's motivation for, you know, setting Casey free, for breaking him out, uh, besides love, you know, there was a part of it too, where maybe she felt like he was innocent of this crime that he was, um, you know, going to go to trial for. Yeah. And you made a good point about, um, people wanting to talk sometimes years later and it almost being therapeutic. And I was on this panel once about being a responsible crime journalist. And I, I feel like we can be really proud of these 10 episodes that are coming out in that way too. I think uh, your team, I think we all went about it responsibly and, and with respect, uh, which for, for a lot of these victims, which you, know, you can't say the same for a lot of the shows out there, a lot of the more sort of tabloid shows. I mean, this really is um, a docu-series. You know, we were about documenting the truth and telling these stories in ways that haven't been told and bringing up new information, but not making information up, not forcing people to talk. And I think that that's something we can all be really proud of, too. Completely. And and it's something that, you know, uh, one of the, the, you know, the biggest reasons, uh, you know, I respect you uh, is is seeing the way that you handle yourself out in the field and and the way that you do your reporting and it's the same with ashley banfield you know the way that she does it and, and connects 
with um, with the families and with all, all the different parts, the the uh, legal, law enforcement, um, and Laura Ingle, who did a great job also on the on uh, the Gilgo uh, Beach episode. So seeing that in all of you um, is, uh, I think, just makes our team so much stronger and um really i think the, the the viewers respect that type of storytelling and storyteller uh who clearly is not just out there for the get you know oh yeah and for us it's cool because we covered these stories in real time when they were happening and now to be able to go back and take a closer look and get two hours to really dive in um, again, it's just it's not something you you see very often to have that that kind of time. It was obviously a lot of work for you, for everybody behind the scenes. I mean, to do two hours every week, it it was a tremendous amount of work. But I think I think people will will see uh, you know see something different in these stories, which I think is is really exciting. Idaho also, I I'm I'm really excited for people to see the Idaho episode, which I know is still coming together. But that's another case where you know people think they know everything, but but. We took a, a look, you know, the, all the social media influencers and the tips that came in, and there was just so much that I, I, I think I called you right after I screened it the first time, and I said, "Oh my gosh, I, everyone thinks I know this case better than anyone." Like, there's so much that I didn't even know or that I forgot about, and seeing it all come together in the two hours. Yeah, and 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 I, I mean, I seeing you out there and the the footage. Uh, another part of what has been a, a real pleasure of working on this series is that special relationship that we have with news nation and um you know being able to tap into those resources and the archival footage of that uh you know that uh, news nation has and to be able to see that uh, um, initial reporting and then to place it in context to what's going on now but to uh to see you actually in action and putting it all together i mean for you um i mean that has to be uh just re really interesting to see the beginning and where you are now and kind of where it's still going right it's not end it's it's not done yet yeah, no, it, for sure. Because, you know, I feel like we're running 100 miles per hour out in the field and to see something like this come together and think, oh, my gosh, wow, we really did do a lot from the beginning of this story, whether it be Idaho or Casey White or or Gabby Petito. And then there's stuff that we never had a chance to to look into the first time around that with Crime Nation, we're finally getting the chance. I mean, even like with back to Casey White, the, you know, the Alabama prisoner escape, you know, when he confessed that other murder to me, which didn't happen to be true. We never really had a chance to dive into that, but we are with Crime Nation. Um, so I'm super excited, Mike. It's been really a privilege uh, to to work with you, and I can't wait to to get reaction from everybody when all the episodes air. No, same same here and and looking forward to moving forward even into uh you know a next season, you know, fingers crossed, you know, looking looking at other uh you know big cases but also some of these these other uh you know smaller cases that haven't gotten as much attention maybe as the, as they should have, but even jumping into something like uh you know the, the John Bonet case uh, now with the the cold case team or the uh, Scott Peterson with the LA Innocence Project and but the, even the the cases that we're doing now where Chad the Lori Lori Vallow Chad Daybell is on trial beginning of April right and yeah. and then the Delphi case is uh you know um, the end of the year I believe the trial so there's going to be a lot for us to still follow up on and to continue um you know documenting it's interesting that they are real almost everyone we've done so far is still evolving which is even with gabby petito you know everyone thought that that case was closed and shut and then this civil trials looming and suddenly we're getting depositions and and your producers are calling me like oh my god you know we thought we thought we had it done and suddenly we're having to do updates so you know it makes for a challenge but but i think it it, it just shows how these cases you think that they're they're finished with and they're really not so and who knows maybe even after the series airs some of the stuff that we uncovered through through the docu-series will will come into play with you know how some of these things move forward so thanks mike for your time we really appreciate it thank you brian
Hopefully you can tell how excited we all are about this. Crime Nation really is going to be unique, and I just can't wait for everyone to see these episodes. It took so much work behind the scenes, as Mike said, especially because they're two hours, and the first season is 10 episodes, and uh, we went to all of these places and, and got new information. So uh, it, it was quite a bit of work, but I think, I think everyone's going to be pleased with it. We, of course, had the Delphi episode. Uh, that already aired. Again, you can stream it on The CW. Next week will be Casey White. Again, the episodes are at 8 o'clock Eastern uh, on The CW. You probably remember the Casey White story if you're a true crime uh, fanatic like me. It, it was a crazy one in Alabama. Remember, Casey was the inmate there. Vicki White was the jailer, and they had this love affair, and Vicki helped Casey escape from from the jail and they went on the run together. I was out there covering it at the time, chasing them all over the country. Well, we've uncovered some pretty wild stuff uh, now that we've had the time and the dust has settled. And you know, when the, by the way, when the dust settles on a case, you know, I go out usually when things are happening and unfolding. And sometimes it's hard to get people to talk and it's so fresh for a lot of people. They don't wanna talk about what happened, but when the dust settles, you get a lot of new information. Uh, and that's what's been happening uh, since we started shooting these Crime Nation episodes, and that's what happened with the Casey White case in particular. We uncovered some wild stuff. Again, even me knowing the stories, spending so much time on the ground, still can't wrap my mind around what we unearthed with some of these, especially with the Casey White story. Um, we didn't get into a lot initially when I covered it on News Nation, his past and the other crime that he was you know, accused of and whether he actually committed that crime. In Crime Nation, we added the time and we went deep into that, into who Casey White is, what he's been accused of in the past, and how that may connect to his relationship with Vicki White, stuff I've never heard before until we started uh, investigating for Crime Nation. So it's going to be a really good one, the next one coming up on Casey White. Uh, later in the season, you heard me list off at the beginning what we're working on, but later in the season, of course, we've got the Idaho murders, uh, Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Ethan Chapin, and Xander Pernodal all murdered um, in Moscow, Idaho. That awful, awful murder uh, happened over a year ago now. The suspect, Brian Koberger, uh, accused of, of going into the house and stabbing all of the victims to death. Just beautiful young people. It's such a tragic story. Well, there was this whole social media frenzy behind that story. Um, tips that came in through social media. Some were good, some were bad. We looked into those in a way that I have not seen before. Uh, and there were some very interesting tips, some stuff that police may even still be looking into. This is another really, really active one, of course. We don't even have an official trial date at this point. Um, and if we get one soon, it may change. They've had a couple and they keep changing it. But, but the, the Idaho episode, which is coming up later in the season, you're going to learn things you didn't know before. And this comes from a guy who really knows the case. And what we uncovered and what some of these producers on Crime, on Crime Nation uncovered really blew me away. So excited to take a deep dive into that and all the other cases I mentioned. Uh, super excited for you guys to be along for the ride. Check out Crime Nation, 8 o'clock Eastern on the CW every Tuesday night. Then they stream on the CW app uh, and, and then listen to the podcast. Because while this was sort of an introduction to what we're doing, what we're going to do moving forward is really dissect what we learned in some, some of these episodes and, and go a little bit deeper. So thanks so much. Check out Crime Nation. Thanks for being a part of Crime Nation for this episode of the podcast. Don't forget to watch the show, which airs Tuesdays on The CW at 8 p.m. Eastern. This has been Crime Nation, the podcast.